Look what just arrived. It's a tarot game. It's called Questeros. Now, it's rather large. It's a tarot deck with extra stuff on the cards. That's basically all it is, right? It's a tarot deck with extra stuff on the cards, and uh, you use that stuff in order to play whatever game rules and all this other stuff that they like to uh, to put in the game. Now it's rated for one to five, no, one to six players, ages 12 up, 30 to 45 minutes for a card game. That's pretty good. Now, why did I buy it? Well, I'm a fan of card games. Uh, look here, and then look here, and then look here, and look here. I'm a fan of games. I, I like board games. I like card games. So I think it's fair to say that I have invested uh, a little bit of money in uh, card games in total. So getting a tarot deck as a card game is a no-brainer for me. If it's a good game, I love to play it, and and it's a tarot deck too, so I can read with it. Now, a lot of you may not be a fan of games like me. That's fine. Uh, but if you uh, if I'm going to look at the cards, so basically I'm going to figure out if this is going to be applicable to everybody, or is this just going to be kind of like, you know, me? <laughs> kind of like a game for me or something, but you know, I don't know. Anyway, um, you do have a flap that opens up. I like that. I think that is fantastic. That is very cool indeed. Now, since I did get in on Kickstarter, I get the extras. <gasps> the extras. It looks like a token, maybe? Yeah, it looks like a game token. Normally, this would be a player token. I I'm guessing this would be looks like a player token where you hand this over to here you, so you know whose turn it is. Um, that's kind of what it looks like. Let's go ahead and take it out of the bag and check it out. Uh, th this is the Kickstarter. I didn't get on everything in the Kickstarter, but I did get the base game kind of thing. Uh, looks like a player token, maybe turn token. I don't know. Um, again, based upon my gazillion games, I'm guessing it's stuff at this point. Here's the bottom of the box, and here's the inside of the box. Very cool overall packaging. I think they did a fantastic job for packaging. It is expensive to get a game, to make a game nowadays, basically, right? So here is, I guess, a, a player tracking pad. That's a generous amount of uh, paper. Normally, you don't get that much paper in these kind of things, but that's a generous amount. Uh, I guess you give a pad to each player. It looks blank on the back. Okay. Now, Norm, I th most of you are going to look at this as, you know, what do the cards look like? What I'll be able to read them, etc. So here are your instructions. Nice and simple, like I like it. Pretty traditional. Uh, you got, what, uh, 30, yeah, you got 37 pages. You got an extra page with this. Link in the description to people playing the game from front to start. I'm going to do that too, but if you want to see people playing the game now, go to the link in the description. And the other thing you get is obviously the cards. Uh, we can compare this with the Mystic Melodies uh, card size, about the same size as Mystic Melodies, kind of the same size as uh, our traditional size. Broken up into two packs. Let's open both of these and check out what the actual cards look like. Whoa. All right, so they are going to be probably be out of order. Um, I guess you know when you're making a when you're making a card game and you're not a hardcore tarot reader, you are probably going to have them out of order. It looks kind of out of order. You got one of blades, one of swords, ace of swords over here. Um, okay, normally when we print stuff, we get extra cards. So these are look like extra cards. We got the Questoros. Um, I guess no, die in the dungeon game. We got epic cards here. Um, so they look like player handouts. That's what it looks like. Yeah, epic cards one to 10, epic cards up to, up to 21. So you got handouts for up to, it says up to six players. So you got six handouts uh, to the players. And then you got a common handout here. I'm showing encounters one through five, six through 10, 11 through 15, and 16 through 20. So there's your encounters. And there is your hand player handouts uh, cards. Then we have a, a special encounter, maybe. I don't know. Look, this looks kind of cool. I like that art. And now we have the back of the tarot deck. Obviously, not um, 
Well, is it? Or is it? Uh, no, obviously not reversible friendly. Again, these are not hardcore tarot people. These, they made a game. So here are your staves, uh, king of staves. So we got the wands here. Uh, card quality is super thin. Card quality is mighty thin, um, in my opinion. Uh, okay, four, five, let's do a flip through of these. Let's organize this first so I don't just kill you guys with this. Here's the Jester, uh, Warlock, Mentor, Centaur, Succubus, Paladin, Valkyrie, Deck of Fate. Uh, so yeah, these are not gonna be, or maybe they are. I mean, we got the Devil, the Demon, we got the Order of the Magi, the Tower. We got, um, I'm not sure what that is. Got a little moon, got a little moon action. Got a little sun action. Got a judgment and got a world card. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could, I guess. You could, I guess. I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, let's go to the numbered. Right, let's go to the number. Okay, let's uh, assume that's zero, that's a fool. Okay, so we got, let's do a, <laughs> sorry, I'm like, this, this is the, the most, I mean, it's not a tarot deck per se, formal tarot deck. So we got to kind of uh, look through it here. We got the Queen of Blades, King of Blades. All right, let's do wands first. Let's do blades. Let's do cups. And then let's do orbs, right? Let's do orbs. Okay, so wands are going to go up top. And pentacles at bottom. Majors over here. Okay, let's do the flip through or look through of these. Here's the side of the cards. And here is a flip through. Okay, the, je the fool. The fool is the jester. Um, interesting. We have a pretty traditional. The fool's not holding anything but a dagger. Uh, looks like more of a warrior type of fool rather than a, um, you know, with the rose and the knapsack, you have the warrior type. And we have the magician with uh, all of the, all of the symbol, symbol, sim symbolism within it and mountains, <coughs> almost like the emperor on the back, which I think is kind of interesting. Then we got the high priestess, it looks like. My priestess looks pretty cool. Um, you do have the crescent moon down here. And again, we have extra symbols here uh, and symbols uh, everywhere uh, for this anyway. Okay, so now we have the centaur. So the high priestess is going to be the empress. Now we have the emperor with the dwarf king. Now we have the, um, we did already do the hierophant, the emperor. Uh, yeah, that is the Hierophant. We have the Hierophant. A lot of, a lot of out, out of this world kind of colors here. Um, the Succubus, I assume that's the Lovers. Uh, then we have Strength card, which is interesting. Then we have uh, the Valkyrie. It's going to be Justice with the Scales. Then we have the Hermit, which is kind of cool looking. And then we have the Wheel of Fortune, which is interesting with the cards. I like that. Now we have, um, I'm not sure what's going on here. This is, uh, the Ranger. Uh, okay, we have the Ranger. And then we have the Hanged Man. There we go. The Assassin. He's an Assassin with Enlightenment. If you have an assassination, it's always good to have an Enlightened one. Uh, the death card, pretty traditional, kind of a little bit on the on the in your face side here. Then we have, I guess, temperance. Interesting, with all the different characters pouring stuff. We have the devil, as discussed before, the demon, the tower, uh, which is kind of cool. That's kind of interesting that somebody's coordinating the tower fall. We have the order of the knights, uh, the star, I guess. Sure, because we do have the star back there. We do have the moon, as discussed before. It's almost like we have somebody organizing or coordinating the moon. We have the sun. And then we have judgment. The rebirth, the reincarnation, and finally the world. So obviously not going to be for a beginner. This is going to be for a more advanced kind of person. Um, if you're looking for meanings, may not be in here, considering this is a game. So you got, if you're a beginner, you got two, two strikes against you. One is the cards kind of loosely match the right away. 
Two, you don't get any instructions for reading the tarot. You just get to get instructions for the game. I think as a bonus, it would have been great to have some instructions for tarot included in the box, but um, that's not gonna happen, I guess. Uh, Ace of Wands, um, you got the Two of Wands. I mean, that's that's looking pretty Rider Waite-ish. That is looking pretty Rider Waite-ish. Uh, but again, I think the majors are gonna throw you off a little bit. I mean, renamed, whatnot, the way it is. You also have a bunch of extra cards here. You have um, Adonis, the Goddess of Light. And then you have Necrotus, the God of Darkness. <laughs> um, and three of Staves, pretty you know, interesting. You have the four. I like it. The celebration, the dance underneath. Uh, you do have the five of Staves with the conflict, the uh, coordination there. You do have a six of Staves. Interesting. Um, being supported and whatnot. Seven with the defensiveness. You have the eight with the flight. The eight with a flight is, I don't know, with the bird, kind of overdone, in my opinion. I mean, put it in the comments. Is, are, are birds in the Eight of Wands overdone? I mean, is that, is that, have we had enough of that, is my question. Uh, nine, the Wounded Warrior. It, this, is, this is a really defensive Wounded Warrior, though. He's very, very, in a very defensive stance. Normally, the Wounded Warrior is sort of resting, but this looks kind of active. This looks more active. It's got the uh, knee protectors, shin protectors. Um, anyway, all right. Look like Thai boxing setup. If you've never been into Thai boxing, enjoy the pain. Enjoy the pain from that shit. Uh, anyway, a ten of staves. Um, pretty cool, interesting. Uh, look, ooh, look just how much of a pain in the butt that looks. That not only are you carrying this, but you got to carry it all the way up there. You get the page. You got a knight, which is riding on a chameleon or a lizard. Very cool. And you got the queen of staves. The queen of wands. Ooh, even got the cat. Now, they did some. They did some research. I think they did some research into tarot decks before they did this deck. I I think there's a nod. I think there's a nod and some respect from the, this creator to a real tarot, to tarot people, to real tarot readers. But they put the cat in there. I would say that would be the last concern of anybody making a tarot game. But these, this guy actually made the cat in the Queen of Wands. So, I mean, a healthy nod out to this person for uh, appreciating us. One of blades out of the cloud. The, the penetration of the Kether crown, they, they, they kept that. That's critical to the ace of, ace of swords. Uh, the two of blades kept the blindfold. They kept the little islands. We got the three. The three looks very, ooh, I like sort of the veins or the veins coming out of there. We got the four of blades with the rest, the relaxation. Um, the Five of Blades, the Lord of Defeat. The Six, very cool, very cool. We have the Seven, all right. And a little bit of Eight action, too. Nine, mm -hmm. okay. Oh, and the image in the wall, that's kind of cool. I like her active avoidance of this, like, don't get near me, I've had enough. You got the Ten of Blades, and uh, what the hell is that? The, the crown? Uh, helmet? That's their helmet that fell off. And they're actually holding one of the blades. <gasps> I've never seen that. I've never seen a, a participant holding one of the blades that, that tried to kill them. This is interesting as hell. That's very interesting. Page of Blades, I like it. The night, ooh, how pretty. I love the gleam and the shine. Up the blade, we got the queen. And the king, and the king. In an awkward stance because I, okay. Um, the cups, we have the ace with the dripping in there and the, and the pigeon coming down. Uh, oh, you know, the leaves and whatnot. You got the two reaching out. It's interesting that he's in full uniform. Uh, and that is fallen down. Ooh, that's interesting. You got a three of cups with wings. 
cool, a kind of fairy action. You got a four, a little bit of a grouch, right? The fairy's bringing it in instead of the cloud, but you have a four. Now you have the five with the Lord of Disappointment. I love the windowed action there. I love windows and tarot cards. I think windows have a lot of built-in meaning when you're doing a reading. Having a window brings in a whole new perspective to that. Uh, Six of Cups with the happy family, the cheering amongst the family. The Seven of Cups reaching out. Look like a little G.I. Joe belt there. Eight of Cups, the disappointment, the abandonment. It's interesting that the cups are elevated. It's also interesting that one path is completely blocked. Kind of cool. Uh, nine of Cups, pretty traditional, but not only you have cups, but you have other objects too. Ooh, and a treasure chest, and a treasure chest, and a box. A lot of good stuff in there. That, that is innovation, my friends. That is innovation. I love that. The curtains are pulled back and we reveal what's behind them. So, so cool. <laughs> and we have a Ten of Cups, Happy Home, Happy Family. Ooh, a Six of Wands feel here. What a big celebration. What a Six of Wands, a Nine of Cups feel in here. Not only are you together, not only are we re uh, having a union with our new house, which almost looks like a church, basically, but we have other people that are celebrating us. Six of Wands, people supporting you, people celebrating you, right? Nine of Cups, uh, 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 organization here sort of, you know, not on the rainbow, but below the rainbow. A lot of good meanings here. Page of Cups, uh, sort of a little Tai Chi dance or something going on there. You have a Knight of Cups, proud of the wheat field that doesn't exist. Queen of Cups, uh, the water of water, and the King of Cups being out by themselves, but on a pier. So there's a pathway to the King of Cups. That's critical. I think that's critical to doing some readings. I think this, the innovation in this deck for just tarot reading is great. It's fantastic. A lot of extra meanings in here. It really makes me think this, this dude did a lot of research with tarot decks, in my opinion, because the King of Cups is not out on an island by himself, on a chair by himself. He now has a pathway to reach him. He now has a pathway to get back. In addition, he seems more in control than your traditional King of Cups. Let me know what you think in the comments. Ooh, kind of an eight ball feel here with the one of orbs. Um, the juggling uh, from that, pretty standard. Uh, you do have the lamiskate encompassing both objects. Got the three. Ooh, uh, the specifications, the demands. The communication is still here, but that is not a receptive person. Or is it? Or is it? He looks a little intimidating. So we're going to come to him a little bit differently than we do the traditional guy in the Three of Pentacles. This is very cool. Oh, a locked up orbs. Locked up with a key. I've seen it before, but it's kind of rare. Kind of rare. A lot of good meanings in here. Uh, the five of orbs. Ooh, look at this. It's almost like they're coming out of the church like they just got kicked out. Damn, this is a good deck. I, I can't wait to read with this deck. There's so much stuff in this deck. There's so much extra stuff in this deck. I can't wait to read with it. I, I opened it up. I swear to you. I thought I was just going to get a game with, you know, okay cards. These cards are excellent. The extra meanings, the extra built-in stuff in this card, the subtleties in these cards is really making the grade. Uh, six of orbs. Ooh, it's almost like he is the four of pentacles, and he is sort of stealing what this person has. So it, they maybe they gave it to him, and he's like, yes, I got it all, and now he's leaving, and he's going to go put it back in his box. That is so interesting, so cool. Oh man, I may buy another one of these. I may, I may write the dude and say, hey, can I just get a deck? Can you just send me some cards? Because I'd like to play the game, but I'd also like a, a different deck to read. Seven of orbs, so they, he's planting them. Um, the eight of orbs, ooh, very interesting indeed. It's almost like they're embedded within the landscape instead of being on a wall. The nine of orbs, um, you know, it's got a little, 
Breath of the Wild feel in there. A Ten of Orbs. Happy Home, Happy Family. Instead of the dogs, we got the spiders. I mean, okay, sure. I mean, who needs dogs when you have big tarantulas? Um, the Page of Orbs. A lot of you are going to say it's kind of dark and hard to see. I agree with that. Uh, page of Orbs. Um, Knot of Orbs with the spider. It, seems, it just seems like the orbs is dark. I don't remember the other things being this dark. No, like the cups, that's not dark. Um, the blades isn't dark. The staves isn't dark. It just seems like the orb cards are dark. They are a little hard to, uh, the, the differentiation between the cards is kind of difficult. Uh, you do have the rabbit, again, the queen of pentacles with the rabbit. Uh, again, this person studied tarot. This person knows what they're doing. A uh, king of orbs, this is how relaxed this person is. Yeah, okay, this, this, is, this does it for me. That's the, final, that's the final thing that tells me this person studied tarot. Look how relaxed the king of pentacles is. The king of pentacles is a relaxed, retired banker. This person studied tarot. This person did a good job. Okay, I haven't even played the game. Okay, if you want this to read tarot, if you want this to read tarot, in my opinion, the deck's, the, the deck's kind of thin. The deck's kind of thin. You look at like, okay, you look at this versus Mystic Melodies. Okay, here's Mystic Melodies, and here's the Questeros cards. I, I think they're a little bit thin. Um, in my opinion, I think they're a little thin um, to drop 50, 60 bucks for some tarot cards, in, in my opinion. That comes up a lot. That comes up a lot. That comes up to here. That's a lot of, uh, of flexibility. Um, they do spread great, though. They spread great. There are a lot of thin decks. If, if you're okay with that, it's a little thin. Um, um, overall, as a, as a tarot deck, I think this is fantastic. Because of the extra meanings, because of the subtleties within the graphics, um, because of the thin border, I think the, the graphics are excellent. The, the orbs is kind of dark, and it, it, it doesn't have a lot of contrast in some of the cards. It's kind of hard to see. The other suits are, are, the other suits are great. I think the other suits are fantastic. So those are my nitpicks about this. Um, we are going to play the game. Um, Dr. Mystical bought this too, so Dr. Mystical and I are going to play the game on a stream and uh, let you guys pitch in and uh, tell us about it. But here are the, you know, here's the, here's the, the cards and here's the rule book, uh, here are your player sheets. Uh, overall, for a raw tarot deck review, excellent. Uh, th I, I, the cards are kind of thin. If you can get over that, the graphics are excellent. Uh, the orbs is kind of hard to see sometimes. If you can get over that, the graphics are excellent. The, the subtleties are great. I think this person did a fantastic job for creating a tarot deck. For a raw tarot deck readings, I like it. I like it. Um, hopefully it'll, you know, for raw tarot deck readings, I like it a lot. I think that this really uh, knocks it out of the park for me. As far as the game is concerned, I'll play some later with Dr. Mystical. We'll get into the groove. You can see if you like it for gaming purposes. Anyway, I mean, what do you think? Let me know what you think about it. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.